And so we're going to be talking about core, how our values shape our existence. We're going to be talking about road. We can each reach our goals in many ways. And we're going to be talking about hitting the mark. Focus breeds success. Because I'm a branding guy, I took my last name, which is Zendersky, so you just cut off the rest of those letters, and that's how I ended up with Zen. If you see something, a room that is empty, most of us would say it's an empty room, but in Zen, it says it's a room full of space. The outcome, the way it elevated the image of the brand and, and the, all the things that, that went with it really made a big difference. And, and that goes to my essential philosophy in business, which is nothing's in isolation. Everything we do in branding matters, every touch point. And we used to have a, an expression in our agency that was, does the receptionist know? But what are we doing here today? Well, we're having another happy hour. It's Friday, it's Friday. What do we do on Friday? Well, we get together, we hang out and we learn. We learn from some of the most special people that I can pull together over my 30 year career. I've had the opportunity to mix and mingle and do business with some of the best thought leaders, mentors, coaches. I mean, you name it in, in, in you know, I've, I've just, when I look back decade by decade, there's so many stories that come along in the journey. You know, there's so many really amazing people that I've met that I've learned from. There's so many people that are now, I'm the age they were when we met 20 some odd years ago. There are folks that have come into my life that I'm just so blessed to have remained really good friends with and following you know, the, the paths of, of some of these people that I've brought on here that maybe some I haven't had talked to for 10 years. You know, I brought some folks on that I rekindled some relationships through this Happy Hour series. So the Happy Hour series is awesome because it gives us a reason to deliver value for you each and every week. And it puts the, you know, it gives me the task of figuring out who those experts are gonna be, who those thought leaders are gonna be, who your content delivery agents are going to be. And we've had to get really creative. I think we're closing in on the 60th episode now and, uh, and, and, and still going strong. So we're getting a little creative. I've, I've started really going back deep or how can we say it? Going deep in the cellar for the good bottles. I'm going deep in the cellar on this one tonight because this one tonight is really super special. He's a really good friend of mine that helped start my dot-com career. Okay, so I'm gonna just share a little bit of a story for all of you. Some of you may have heard the story before. The year is 1998. If you can remember and bring yourself to 1998, what is this thing they call the internet? The website, should I get one, should I not? You remember there was actually a time when businesses contemplated whether it made sense to get a website or not. That was back in 1998. We're talking the pioneering days of e-commerce and the internet. Now we remember the dot-com bubble. Most people that if you're not old enough to know have been in business during the dot-com bubble, or maybe, um, you know, you weren't, you, if, if you were around, then you did not miss the dot-com bubble in the year 1999 going into the turn of the millennial, going into the year 2000, because it was absolutely unprecedented. Valuations of companies skyrocketed in numbers that just made no sense. There were just a lot of ideas, a lot that had not even made any money no profit, no foreseen future profit. And they were going public and their stocks were going through the roof. 
and it created the biggest bubble I had ever seen in my life still today. Because even the real estate market fallout and the financial crisis, that was that was a pretty big bubble. But this dot-com crash was absolutely an incredible time to be alive, an incredible time to be in business, an incredible time to navigate through those waters of pioneering and uh, a new frontier, you know, the wild west. Um, you know, one of the things that, that my company at the time did you know, is we didn't bring in VC money. We didn't bring in venture capital money. We didn't bring in angel investors. We didn't bring in investors and things like that. Good, bad, or indifferent. Sure, I had friends that sold millions of dollars worth of stock. And then when the dot-com bust exploded, they got chewed up like a carcass by vultures in the desert, you know. I watched what happened, but here's where I, this is what, what I did in my journey. The company, was End70 Corporation. End70 Corporation. Just think about it. END70. Well, what does that mean? Well, what does Google mean? What does Yahoo mean? Right? What do a lot of the company names that were sprouting up back then men mean? Um, maybe something to the creators, but to the rest of the world, potentially nothing. But that was a thing. So there's something in branding that when it's not just obvious what you do, you elicit questions about what you do. And that was the whole idea with the end 70. It was END, lowercase, remember the dot com, kind of had to be the internet culture, END, numeral 70. We did billboards on the 405 freeway thanks to this man that I'm gonna be introducing you to here in a second. This man is a branding expert, so much that my firm paid his firm $300,000 roughly in 1998, 1999 to brand n70.com to put a, if anybody remembers back in the uh, dot com days, if you lived up in Northern California, San Francisco area, or even in LA, you saw these billboards popping up everywhere off the sides of the highways. A lot of billboards that didn't make sense. A lot of billboards that were hip to culture, hip to this new internet culture coming in. A lot of teaser campaigns that were three and four months long. Like a billboard that didn't make sense until you saw the third month billboard. And that's what we did. Thanks to my special guest, we created one of my most fun marketing campaigns ever. Because I can say as I stand here today, hey, I had a billboard on the 405 freeway, the freeway I used to drive by all the time. In fact, I saved it. I don't know where the hell it is now. And it would fill up my entire living room if you if you were to stretch that thing out. That thing went from storage unit to storage unit over the years. I kept it for as long as I could and I finally got rid of it. It was a really cool teaser campaign. What we were was N70. So I'm gonna tell you what N70 meant. My branding experts, this firm told me that N70 was a term used by the Associated Press where by an N30 was a story that wasn't complete, wasn't ready for publication yet. An N70 was listo baby. Well, what that means is ready. An N70 was ready to go. An N70 was your solution your total solution, your N70 to doing business on the internet. And that was the branding, that was the messaging. So what we did to make it fun is we put the first billboard out there on the 405 and it said, the end is coming. Now, if you remember, this was right before the year 2000. And there was this thought of Y2K and the end of the world and who knows, who knows where everybody's minds was at at that time. Everybody had a different belief as to what was going to happen, but something big was going to happen, right? I mean, I even took off to Thailand to go live on the fruits of the land because, hey, if the world's coming to an end, I'd rather be on, in Thailand than right here in Orange County. So the end is coming. It was a black billboard with spray paint looking font that said the end is coming. Now, if you're driving on rush hour traffic every morning and you see this thing for 30 days, you're telling yourself, what sicko would spend good money to put up a sign like this? Like what use is this, right? Now the next month, which was uh, December of 1999, I do believe, um, 
and or or maybe it was November, but it said the end is near. So now if you're driving every day on this freeway, for 30 days you saw the end is coming. Now you're thinking this guy's a real whack job, right? Because he's spending double up the money to let us, he's a warmonger, somebody, you know, the world's coming to an end. Chicken Little must, a, a rich Chicken Little is what this guy is, obviously putting his billboard on the side. And then January 1st, 2000, the billboard went up and it said the end is here, n70.com. That was it. That's simple. So anyway, that was fun. So thank you for letting me share that story. It was so cool. My expert on here is an author of The Book of Zen. You see all these little sticky marks in here? A Book of Zen, his third book now, a collection of short stories, because my man, my friend is a brilliant writer. He's a brilliant teacher. He's also, he teaches at, at, at one of the schools in, uh, it's, Irvine, one of the schools, I spoken at the school for him to his class. He teaches marketing at the college there in Orange County. He's an author and he's a branding expert and he works for some very, very large companies. Uh, one you may know of as uh, one of his clients is Maidenlink. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but that's a big SaaS platform that's making some big, huge waves in this new economy. So I was speaking with my good friend, Gary Zendersky, who's here with me today the other night and we were talking about our journey and I really remember, I really was able to reflect on the fact that, Gary, we met when you were my age and I was just this young punk with a lot of piss and vinegar. And uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'll say sorry for the rest of your life. You know, I'll say sorry for whatever, whatever hassle I gave you at my young 20s. But I want to thank you, Gary, for uh, coming to our community for the second time now, not not just the second time, but in this happy hour series, to share your wisdom, to share your short stories. And so here's what we did. We had Gary pick three of the short stories from his book series, The Book of Zen. And we asked him to pick three stories that he felt was ideal for you and your journey today as an agency in 2021. What is it, October? Gonna be November? And so we're gonna be talking about core how our values shape our existence. We're gonna be talking about road. We can each reach our goals in many ways. And we're gonna be talking about hitting the mark. Focus breeds success. So with no further ado, my good friend, family friend, business friend, coach, mentor, trainer, Mr. Gary Zagurski. How are you, Gary? Great, Damien. You know, I, I love every time you tell that story, it just makes me feel like uh, those were the good old days. But you know what? These are the good old days. These are, this is, we're living in a great time. That was fun. The out, the uh, the campaign, you know, that, that Damien's talking about, the billboards, they were not cheap. You know, he was a good client. He, you know, he didn't, you know, he did, you know, balk a little bit. Some of the checks were pretty big that he had to sign. But, but the outcome, the way it elevated the image of the brand and, and the, all the things that, that went with it really made a big difference. And, and that goes to my essential philosophy in business, which is nothing's in isolation. Everything we do in branding matters, every touch point. And we used to have a, an expression in our agency that was, does the receptionist know? Because you can do the best campaign of all time and the phone rings and the person that's supposed to answer the question for the customer or potential prospect doesn't know what's going on, you're dead. And boy, we're, don't we all know this if you guys are out there selling leads or doing rank and rent and all that stuff, right? Exactly what he said, exactly. Yeah. Every, everything matters. So, you know, uh, I've, I've been on the road a little bit lately and uh, I'm, I'm still doing really well uh, teaching at UC, at UC Irvine. You see her, you see I is what I was trying to pull that to memory. Damien's always been a great guest on the on the on campus because he's got such high energy, don't you think? I mean, uh, you know, I seen him in gym and I would get I would get tired just watching him work out. So anyway, uh, what he asked me to do, and it's it's a it's a good project, and it's I, I spent some time with this, is to pick a story from each of my three books. Now, the first one, let's see, came out in 2012. It's called the Book of Zen, and it's uh, stories and change, stories and inspiration for a changing world. Uh, there's a lot of inspirational stuff in here, but there's also some business stuff. It's uh, I put a lot into that book. The second book came out, Zen Zone, which was in 2000. Let's see what year was that? It was 2000. 
2015. So that was a few years ago. And then last year, we came out with Now and Zen. Now, this is the last of the Zen series. It's because I'm a branding guy, I took my last name, which is Zendersky. So you just cut off the rest of those letters. And that's how I ended up with Zen. I happen to have somewhat of a kindred spirit with the concept of Zen anyway, which I really like. And uh, just a great example of what Zen means if you're not familiar with it. And it has a lot to do with businesses. Uh, in, if you see something, as, uh, a room that is empty, most of us would say it's an empty room. But in Zen, it says it's a room full of space. It's got something in it. Everything has something in it. So what I'm going to share with you today is a couple of stories, some of them about my career. I'm going to go back in time and talk about a couple of things that happened, but they're right out of the book. I just literally picked them out and I printed them out on a sheet of paper and I'm going to kind of read them to you. I apologize for having to read them to you because I, I don't know them. So many times uh, I'll read something that I've written and I'll go, God, this guy is a hack. I mean, how in the world would anybody want to read this stuff? And then sometimes I'll look at it, I'll see, I'll read something I completely forgot about. And I'll think, God, this is friggin' brilliant. I hope these lean on the brilliant side today. I, I, I really, I really do. So, Damien, you want me to just like start with it and just go through there? Yeah, real quick before you do that, so then I won't have to do it later. I actually looked at where these little taps were. And I want to I want to tell you what they were. It was uh, shift happens. That was the that was the first tab. When things go bad, these are things that I needed at a certain time. Um, the upside of down times. The leader's guide to turning turmoil into trust. And what moms want. And finally, take the shot. Those you know, were those are my six stickies in here. Those, uh, the three of those are the ones that I, I I looked at before I picked the one tonight, which I'm going to call hitting the mark. Uh, but you know, the stories are, they really come from business. I, I should I should back up a little bit. I write about change. You know, uh, new markets. I work with companies and brands going through transition, brand extension, line extension, new products going to new markets, and in the process of working with all these organizations going through change. And you can look at my website zen.us. And you'll see that the, the client list besides N70, which was which is an awesome startup, actually a transi transitional brand that went from where Damien was to where he wanted to be. And, and it was his vehicle to get there. Uh, you find out in transition that in change, uh, there's so much positive stuff that can come out of it, yet we're all really afraid of it. You know, change just is, a, is, the, is the most, is the one thing that you can never escape and, it, and it's reason that is true is because you think about it, this planet that we're on is hurling through space at about 60,000 miles per hour. And not only is it hurling through space that fast, it's spinning as it's going. There is no way that anything that you can ever conceive is just going to ever stay the same. And so that's what's true for us as, uh, as digital marketing experts. And it's also true for our clients. Nothing ever stays the same. One thing that branding will help you do and understanding um, why I keep on using the Zen name is because I, I only had one good idea, I guess I kept on using it. Why, why change it? Uh, is that there's consistency over time. So I'll start with, uh, I'll read a story and basically I want, what we want to do is get your involvement in this and kind of unpack it and see what it means. And you can tell me if you think it's full of shit or not, you know. Uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't mind criticism. I've taken it my whole career. It's one of the things that you probably have all gone through. Rejection is horrendous. Uh, it, it just hurts, but it only hurts for a second. And you know what? You get some knowledge out of it and you can always take that knowledge and turn it into power. Okay, so this is a story from the Book of Zen, uh, page 183, written in the year 2012. It's called Hitting the Mark. Michelangelo said, the greater danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we hit it. I just want to stop there for a second and think about that. You know, don't we always sometimes just kind of gravitate to what we know we can do? What about what we, you know, aspire to do? It goes on. And I said, this guy really knew what he was talking about. And thank God he always aimed to heaven. 
I think that it's pretty true that our society and culture always benefit from the merits of those that succeed in a grand way. Great discoveries, inventions, art, profound insights and teachings are all manifested by individuals that, like Michelangelo, chose to aim high. So why is it that we often set our sights too low? Is it a fear, a preconditioning, lack of knowledge, or just plain laziness? Well, I don't know for sure, actually. In my experience, I found that what holds most people back is simply a lack of focus. Years ago, our agency worked for an international company. This is an agency called Ergo Worldwide, which is the one Damien hired, that had decided to expand and consequently introduced a number of different products into the market. This expansion put a great deal of pressure on the entire operation, especially the global sales force, which had to learn about so many different and new products that they literally had no time to sell. The company was committed, but inter internally, there was a lot of complaining and second guessing that perhaps the leadership was spreading resources a bit thin. So when the annual sales meeting brought the management and representatives together from around the world for a pep talk, from the top executives, almost everyone was wondering if the expansion strategy would be abandoned. Most were encouraged by the theme of the conference. This is absolutely true. Pinpoint Focus 1999. The keynote speaker, the chairman, was scheduled to talk on the last day of the three-day conference. Meanwhile, for the first two days, I had only witnessed the rumblings of lost sales, lost customers, and too much to sell criticism emanating throughout the 1,200 member sales organization. These are guys from all over the planet. By day three, everyone, I mean every person I met and talked with, was hopeful and assumed that an announcement would be made to refocus the company's efforts on the core products, which had always delivered huge profits. I sat in the back of the auditorium and watched people file in. I listened to the buzz and anticipation of the speech, which I felt would set the tone for getting us back on track. As the chairman sat behind the podium, a huge graphic depicting an arrow hitting a bullseye was illuminated behind him. Hey, you got that picture? 1,200 people waiting to hear that this idea of all these products is really not gonna make it for us. So here's a big target. The words of the chairman were deliberate and poignant. He said he was disappointed in the results so far but encouraged that a new strategy to help overcome the pitfalls of multi-product launches would get us back on track. So far, so good. I could sense a feeling of lightness permeate over the audience as we all anticipated this call to clarity and focus. Not. His next words reminded me of the final scene in the movie Bonnie and Clyde, where in slow motion you see the stars being riddled with bullets. You remember this movie? I don't know if you see it. Uh, everyone was grasping their chest as if they had shot, been shot through the heart as he stated that, yes, we are going to focus by directing our attention to product one and to product two and to product three, literally up to 23 different products, all with the straightest face and cocksureness of the captain of the Titanic. The team immediately sprang into action and began rearranging the deck chairs because you knew it wasn't going to work. Focus is a component of vision. And as such, it's a function of setting priorities and goals with a well-defined and very specific outcome in mind. To me, the in mind part seems to be the most critical. Seeing the target, wanting to hit the mark, and acquiring the tools and knowledge to get there is how greatness is achieved. But how? Michelangelo also said that a man paints with his brain, not with his hands. And I think that one can easily extend this concept to mean that everything is created with our brains. That is to say, if you can think it, you can do it. Thoughts create things. So thinking about whatever it is you really want in life is like picking up a bow and arrow. And I love this analogy. The act of simply pulling it with your hands in a positive step, like you're pulling the bow back, is like, is like an anticipation of hitting the target. Then you must load the arrow, much like your experience, pull back on the string, slowly pulling the bow back, takes energy and strength. And all the while it gives you time to think and focus on the target. The pressure to get the arrow to its critical launching point can be intense. 
but calling on your resolve and dreams allows you to get to the maximum torque. And then once pulled back to the max, you hold it. Take a deep breath. And as long as you look out over the tip of the arrow, the target becomes huge. You're ready and you let it fly. And in one split second, all of the energy you invested is returned. You're there. Aim high. That's the story. Anybody have any immediate reactions? You're on mute, Damien. Sorry, I, uh, I, I, was, I was enjoying the analogy because I was remembering when I took my daughters to bow practice and back when we were small and, and, and then they would give the adult the bows. And you're right, that pressure, that pressure, this, that was a really good analogy for that story. And I enjoyed the story. So let's expand on that. Let's dig on that. Like what is, what inspired that story for you besides the story itself? Like what, you know, how do you work? How do you come up with your stories? Well, you obviously well, reflect on your journey. Well, this one was was pretty simple, and I, it was for an international uh, florist company, and they had offices all around the planet. And so I was sitting there like everybody else thinking, how in the world can we market so many different disparate products and, and still hope to be successful? It, it was a strategy that was really like throwing the arrows, you know, as opposed to really launching them. And so I felt the same angst that everybody did in the room, and I knew a lot of these people personally, and, and so we went back to the drawing board and, I, and I, I documented that really, you know, from my notes, that's where I got this, this uh, book, that's where I got this story. And I thought, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to have any of my clients do this again. I really, you know, tip my clients like, can you strip away some of the stuff that really isn't necessary, that you really don't need to do? How about hitting something that everything else is a byproduct of that? Pick the one thing that you have to do. In their case, what happened is eventually they had to pick a distribution strategy to help them get the products to the market. And once they picked the right strategy, it was actually easier. But it took a lot of time and it didn't need to be that painful. You know, so often we sit in meetings, we let our clients do the talking and they come up with these cockamamie ideas, some of them absolutely brilliant, which you got to follow. And I did that with Damien. I didn't get in Damien's way at all. Uh, you just kind of let him be who he is. But sometimes you got to say, hey, listen, you know, have you thought about this? Have you tried that? Maybe this is another way. Be so, be, just be sure that you're really locked in because Michelangelo is right. You know, the tendency is for clients and all of us to kind of aim for what we know we can get because it's easier. It feels good. You know, you're going to get it. You're going to be successful. But to really be successful, you got to change that trajectory. Look a little higher, aim a little higher, and go with it. I mean, the worst that can happen is you fail. But fail is a learning opportunity. There, there really, failure is that, there's, failure doesn't say you're dead, you're done. It just says you, you just learned something, you're gonna go on a different direction. So the key to this is that focus really breeds success. The more focused you can be, and pick something for your agency too that, that lets you stand apart. In our company, we, we hung our hat on a simple premise that we deal with organizations and brands going through transition. And whenever we talk to somebody, we would tell them that's what we do. And sure enough, <laughs> this is why we did it, everybody is going through transition because you can't help. It. So it became a great market thing. It has held up <laughs> so long and so strongly that I've been doing this for 40 years and I haven't missed a beat. So that's that's the background for that. I love that. that and that's the old, it, it reminds me of the shoot for the moon, you hit a star. Hey, so you hit a star. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Does anybody, Does anybody have any have, questions? Yeah, that's the thing. I want to open it up to anybody that wants to unmute, ask questions. Um, you can do it in the chat. You can obviously do it on audio. Anything that inspired you that you want to mention, please do. Uh, let's see. I, I know what this is, by the way. What is? That, that's cool. That's hilarious. Oh my God, Joe. I still have the website up. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't the website. That's just a placeholder. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, that's the logo, man. Oh, who's got the logo? I didn't see it. 
Joe, Joe put it in the chat. He put okay. uh, W3N70.com. So yeah, we clearly still owned it. We just put something there to have something there. But, yeah. yeah. Man, so long ago, 21 years ago, huh? 21, 22 years ago is the year 2000. So 1998 is when we started. So 25 years ago, Gary. You know, every brand has its own essential character. And one of the things that, that you know, my definition of a brand is it takes three different components. One is you got to understand the personality of the organization because it's the people that make it happen to the actual products and the you know the the elements of the brand whatever that might be whatever service or product component it is and third the image of the user what does it say about the people using the brand and in Damien's case his his essential character was make it happen you know there there isn't a thing that this guy would not tackle and do for you or for me or for anybody he's just that way and and that translates to something that would be, I'm going to give you the solution you're looking for. Hence, N70, we spent, the reason we came up with it is because we kept on looking for something that would say total solution for a guy that could make anything happen. And the fact that nobody had ever heard of it or very few people had didn't really matter because again, as he said at the beginning, Damon, you know, this is the, this is the dot-com era. We put stuff up there that didn't make any sense at all and put a Super Bowl commercial together that sold nothing. It's just <laughs> insanity. So. And raise 50 million. <laughs> exactly. I wish those days, some of those days would come back. I would love to do a Super Bowl spot. So anyway, so feel, just feel free to unmute and, and chime in anywhere you want to. And I'll, I'll move on to the second unless there's a, any specific question on that first one. But th this is representative of kind of the stories that, that I write. Uh, they're based on real things that happened to me or they're based on insights that I learned from all my years in business. You know, there, there might be some things that are personal in the book, uh, I, I know there are, but uh, they, they come from a space of, you know, just wanting to share. Hey, Kim's got a question in here. Um, okay. How influential is ego versus customer? You need both reflective of knowledge. I just read it how you wrote it. If I understand the question again, is how, how reflective of? How influential is ego versus customer need both reflective of knowledge yeah kim i'm 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 trying to understand the sentence i'm trying to read it the best i can too uh, it's in the chat gary have you pulled up the chat um look down at on the right. bottom you'll see the little chat open it and a little window will pop up so ego versus customer need yeah you know okay there you go ego at the at the end of the day you know the customer as they say is always right because they pay the bills and and but that doesn't mean you, they're also be better served if they're successful. So sometimes you gotta like step in and say, hey, you know, uh, let your ego say, I got a better idea than what you have. Let me execute that. Uh, I can't, every, every customer client and client situation is different. Uh, you have to kind of, you know, take your own shot, but ego is an important criteria in branding because ego is is the essence of what allows a branding expert like me and all my clients to be able to succeed because people want to have what other people got they want to have that success it makes them feel good ego drives a lot of the capitalism and the, and the market that we live in uh it's a necessary thing it's, is it the best way to live no but it's the way the universe kind of sets it up so that we can do some commerce and so sometimes you got to play to that. And if you have a client that has a good idea, you can actually stoke, you know, stoke their ego by making it come to life. Sometimes their ideas come from their kids or their wives, or you give them an idea, this is the worst that can happen. And they take it to their wife who thinks, I don't understand it. I don't think you want to do that, honey. It's too much money. Don't spend it. And then you're dead. Because why? Because people are a bigger influencer than anything you can come up with. That's the other side of the coin. And I, I know of working for big brands and all over the world that we have a lot of campaigns that are still in the closet that we couldn't sell. Uh, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm off, way off your question point, but the idea is that it takes all of that. Nothing's in isolation in order to get the thing done. Because the best idea is still got to be sold to somebody that has a checkbook that makes it happen. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Kim, for the question. Yes, this does answer my question. Thanks. Awesome. 
Oh, good. Good to hear that. Okay, I'm going to start with the second one. This is from the book Ta-da! Zen Zone. Okay, Zen Zone is probably the cleanest written book I have of the of the three. And, and, and by the way, I do want to get just a real quick housekeeping for all of you. Write down any questions that you're going to want to ask Gary before he leaves the session that has anything to do with branding that you've been wanting to know. Okay, so just there, there, there's no one on the planet that I respect more when it comes to branding. Yes, we've had other branding experts on, but this is the man I absolutely respect the most when it comes to that. Whether it be branding for your clients, branding for yourself. So if you've got questions right that might not be pertaining to the short story, just write it down. And before we let Gary leave, we'll make sure to hit them. Okay. All right, back to you, Gary. Yeah, I'm happy to talk to any of you, or even if you want, you know, Damien can give you my email address. You can contact me afterwards. Uh, the next story is from the now in, uh, oh, it's, yeah, this is called from the Zen Zone called The Road Ahead. That came out in 2015. And uh, the essence of this is that, you know, we can reach our goals in many different ways. So before I start the story, think about, you know, uh, the what's in the world, the goals we have. It, the, my secret to success is stay focused on what you want to achieve and don't always work, don't necessarily worry about how you're going to get there. Because once you start thinking about the hows, you can strain yourself and all the obstacles start to appear. But if you can stay focused, think about like, I want to go to New York. There's a million different ways to get to New York. You can walk backwards and you can hitchhike. I mean, you can, there's all kinds of ways you can get there if that's what you really want to do. So don't worry about it being that particular flight, that particular time, because sometimes you'll be disappointed. And that's not the way the universe works. The works It works when you stay focused on what you really want to achieve. So that's the essence of this book, the, the, this story called The Road Ahead. Okay, America's beloved philosopher, Yogi Berra. You know Yogi Berra is a famous New York Yankee baseball player. He had some great advice on how to find our way. He said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Okay, uh, it's funny, but, but like his, it. his point is really amazing. This is truly a misspoken genius and can really be helpful as a guide when we face choices and change in our lives. Often when we do come to a roadblock or face unclear options, there's a temptation to hover and speculate for a long time on which might be the right path to take. For Yogi, the answer is simple, keep moving. Our answer for when we get stuck might be a bit more deliberate and complicated, but there is wisdom in the notion of taking action. What supports the idea of keep moving is that the world has changed so dramatically in terms of speed connections. We have, an ex we have an access to information never before available and new opportunities both personally and professionally are bubbling up everywhere. And even with the COVID, as a side note, as it actually more opportunities are coming. This is a kind of a renaissance which creates new layers of potential and dispels the notions of a direct path or a single straight line to our dreams. Now more than any time ever on this planet, we find ourselves in a driver's seat of epic proportions. For example, the computing power of the smartphone we have in our pocket is more than all of NASA had in 1969 to put a man on the moon. You know, and we've got people, we've got actors that were in space, like Bill Shatner going out and floating in space with, you know, Bezos. So, you know, you have all that stuff kind of happen. It's an incredible world. Today's world and the options we have to consider could be daunting if we don't know where we want to go. But for those with a destination in mind, it's truly liberating. And the good news too, is that we have a built-in mechanism to cope with all of this newfound data and noise and that we tend to see only what we look for and we miss the rest. This means that when focused, our minds only attract and are drawn to what we want to and expect to find. So even if we take a wrong turn or we're knocked off our path, we're still able to navigate and get back to the right direction. What happens in our dreams act like a, and coordinates our, in our minds actually helps us function like a GPS. Once we get the heading right, we can be blown off course, get stalled, encounter a storm, but we still have the means to get there, wherever there might be. With power like this, why wait even another second to set the course? 
the road ahead awaits. Get packed, it's time to meet your future. And as Yogi also said, the future ain't what it used to be. See you there. Finally, it doesn't matter which path we take as long as we know where we're going. This one is super crucial for the audience. Um, you know, in, in being in the business that I've been in since 98, okay, it's always been about inspiring to take action. Um, mo all success came behind action. All money that was made, any client that was gained, all came behind action. And so I wish it was as easy as just telling everybody, take action, take action, take action, take action, take action, because yes, it always works 100% of the time. Oh, but wait, Damien, you're wrong because I took action at one time and I got a big no, that didn't work. No, but what did you get out of that action? You got knowledge, you got experience, you got a lesson, you got, I can go on and on. Imperfect uh, action is better than inaction, right? We've heard that. You're now an entrepreneur. So the business solely depends, full, solely depends on the action taken for it to be an ongoing endeavor, an ongoing concern, the action taken. And if you're a solopreneur, it's you that must take the action. There's multiple roads to get there, borrowing from Gary's story. Just knowing where you wanna go is important. This is for Lloyd, who I had a call with yesterday evening, right before the Green Bay Packer game. <laughs> and it's this, there are multiple right ways to get where we want to go. And if we focus on making sure that we're addressing every right way, we'll never leave the starting line. And so I, I truly, truly believe, even though this stares in the face, if you've been an engineer, okay, or if you've been a very detail-oriented person, and you had to be, right? Maybe you're, you're working on very important stuff, medical devices, you can't just wing it. That might kill somebody, right? So I get, like I was telling Lloyd, I get the personality type and I get meticulous attention to detail. But as an entrepreneur, you almost need to flip the script because all successful entrepreneurs failed their way up to the top. They just failed and failed and failed and failed and failed their way to the top. You know, Tesla's now a trillion dollar company. Have we not witnessed some failures on his way to the top? Why? He takes big risks, takes big shots, right? He's clearly one that literally aims for the moon. He hits moons and stars, right? <laughs> Clearly aims for space. But point being is, I really love this story, Gary, and that's why I wanted to spend some time on it. I'm gonna turn it back over to you. But if you are committed to being an entrepreneur, serving businesses, helping businesses, what you are doing, their success and survival relies on, then you must take action. You must take action not only so that you can serve, but so that you can actually make a profit in this business, in this endeavor that you've decided to take. It's all about action. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, Gary, back to you, man. I love that story, so I wanted to hit on it a little bit. Thanks, thanks Damien. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, the next one is, is a, a little bit more on a personal note, not for me personally, but for us as business professionals and entrepreneurs, and that you know, we have our own brands that we package and they and what what pushed the brand out for us what gives us our personality is our belief system it's our values and this next story is called working on your core and it came out of the book uh, now and Zen which came out last year okay in fitness training there are lots of exercises for helping to strengthen our body's core Specialists say that core strength is the pillar of our overall health. I agree, and another core that's important is our core values. I believe that identifying and practicing our core strengths and values is what ultimately defines us. Core values are those inherent behavioral traits that do not change over time and are at the heart of our own identity. In my work, I help clients to name and rally behind their core values. They are the fuel for defining our vision and purpose. 
Once these core values are identified, we can tap into their power to transform and energize and lead us to whatever our dreams may be. The only caveat is that they cannot be in conflict with the dream or in any way appear inauthentic. Our core values are not just what we say we are, it's how we demonstrate our true selves, and they are the reason for why we're here and act the way that we do. Core values are not just our personality, although personality can influence what we choose as values, nor are they ethics or morals. Core values represent what's really important to us and fuels our sense of purpose. Here are a couple of ideas to help define yours. Can you remember the very best moment of your life? Ask yourself how you navigated to that moment. What decisions did you have to make that instinctively guided you to the greatest moment? Perseverance, hope, faith, confidence, truth, money, success. Whatever you called upon to believe in to achieve that greatest moment is or was a core value. Values change for us over time. Younger times, it's about a career, and as we age, it's more about family. Some values never change, and they help us make good decisions about everything, because when our decisions feel right, it's because we are aligned with something inside of us that really knows us. It's our inner voice that is speaking the truth. I'll share one, I'll, I'll share one of mine that has served me well, and I believe it's core to my existence. I feel it's my duty to have a positive impact with all of the people in my life. Family, friends, clients, and anybody that could use some winning perspective. Somewhere on my journey, I got the hang of it, and it's brought me more joy than I ever imagined possible. So as, as an adjunct, before I get to the finish here, our brand personality for my company was winning perspective. We always, our concept then we took the market was, there's always a way to win. There's always a way to win, find that way. And finally, I'll finish with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi, who said, your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values become your destiny. Thanks for listening. What we believe we can become, we become. Thank you. Right, you know, um, over the 30 years, my why has changed over and over again, multiple times. Yeah, it's you know because we we live in a in a world that is just full of great stuff. You know, you, you can get distracted. That's why focus is really important. But you know, I I submit that you know there if you like something that you're doing, just do more of it. You're going to get more opportunities to do bigger stuff. But you know, if you're if you're really good at what you're doing right now, the chances are it's good. The same thing that you believe in, the same belief system and core values that you possess that may make, make you successful today could work in any arena for any size client. You know, I, I, I one of the stories when we first started our company way back in 1996, we were doing uh, strategy planning and branding work for clients, charging a few thousand dollars to, you know, because we thought that's what it was worth. And it wasn't wasn't a whole lot of money, but it was enough to give us an idea of what the client wanted when they grew up. And we got really busy for a while. We had this one client that we met with and they kept on asking for a proposal. And I just knew we didn't have the time to do it. So what I did was I just said, okay, just jack this thing up. I don't care how much, make it so unaffordable that they'll never want us again, you know? We just, we just, we, we made it 10 times what we normally charge. And, and you know what? They called right back and said, when can we start? When can we start? And it, I didn't change. I didn't, I didn't wear a new suit and make me somehow better or different. I was the same person. I had the same knowledge. But somewhere I put the value out there. I aimed high like Michelangelo said. And I was surprised, honestly, but it's, it's true. Whatever the market will bear is really the price you should ask. And this is kind of off on a tangent, but I think that's a, the reality we're in today because there's so many options out there. Uh, people can't tell what's good or not. There, there's so much clutter, and I teach this in school right now. 
that you know it, there's so many brands and so much noise you can't get through and sometimes price is the only thing they have to gauge whether you're a quality or not so if you charge a buck you get a buck's worth of value if you charge a hundred bucks a hundred bucks worth of value so think through that too i'm not saying you just go out and start jacking up your prices off for everybody but that's the reality we live in uh, people don't know because they can't tell and that's that's the responsibility of all of us here for your own company you've got to be able to say this is what you stand for this is your core belief this is your vision this is what you want to achieve and if you stay true to that stay authentic people will pick up on it they'll stay true to you and like damien and i we've been together for ever forever and this guy made me buy shoes i didn't even want in belgium you know he can make i'll just listen to him i mean whatever he tells me i'm, I'm in because i trust him. And that's what your clients need to do to you. They, they, you trust each other. You can go places you never thought possible. You know what made you and your firm really good at what you did back then was what you just said. You, you picked up on your core value of being a constant inspiration in people's lives positively, being that source of winning, that source of winning belief in everyone you work with and your clients and people you come into contact with both personally and professionally yes yes and i think what was amazing for me now thinking back um literally 25 years ago you know uh you know i i was very young and what really helped me was when you boosted my ego when you gave me the you know you you and my grandfather were my best cheerleaders. What I mean by that is, yeah, I'm making big things happen. I'm taking risks. I'm putting myself out there. I'm putting it on the line. But when I got in a room with you, everything felt okay. I, 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 I always got the sense that I was on the right course. I'm doing the right thing and I'm doing innovative stuff and no one's even got your tail and no one like you're way ahead of everybody and your vision is and you and you know what you get everything done you'll always find the solution and this is the feedback you continue to give me while we had our meetings and I think in shaping my character and the rest of my life I got way more value than billboards on the 405 uh, <laughs> when you think about it because I'm reflecting on that right now Gary and you're right, that core value showed up in you managing a very young client that was making a lot of waves. Uh, and, and, and it was that core value that kind of kept us together, uh, that won you my contract, and that won you my faith and belief in you and, and your firm, that we were gonna get where we wanted to go because you were going there with us. So, you know, you, you, you helped shape a lot of my character and how I, how I run my business, you know, and, and uh, I'm able to reflect on that in this little session. So I, I'm thankful, I'm thankful to you for that. But yeah, my, my grandfather was the other name that I mentioned was my other cheerleader. When I really thought about it, he didn't really understand much of what I did, but what blew him away, he was Puerto Rican, what blew him away was that I owned my own business. So at age 16 and 17 and 19 and 21 and 24, he continued to ask me the same question. You really the boss? You really own this thing? He didn't know what the hell it did, but he always said, I knew you were gonna be. I knew you were gonna be. I knew you were gonna be. And when I was six and eight and 10, what was that positive feedback that I kept getting? And I think that all played in my character and shaping in business as well. So I just, I don't know how I put you and my grandfather in the same boat, but thank you for being my cheerleader. That, that's great, Damien. You know, the other thing that you do is, you know, you judge your clients before you sign on too. You know, you gotta, you gotta, if they believe in themselves, that's the most powerful thing you can have. And, and Damien just bubbles with confidence. So that was not a problem. The fact that, you know, some of it was kind of erratic from time to time and a little bit crazy, you know, just just showed me that he was serious. And so that that, you know, that means that there's a good role for me in that in that equation. And I had some I had a great team and we developed some really good creative and we had some good ideas. We wrote a lot of good copy and the websites look great and yada, yada, yada. But 
it was really the belief system, and that's what you're talking about, Damien, is that I believed in you and you felt that. And and uh, and you and that allowed me a platform to thrive. Like it yeah, really exactly. Right? Yeah. It's actually it's it's part of the program. You know, all you know, all success has to reach a goal of some kind. And and if you if you're working in business and your clients aren't being successful, there's nothing you can celebrate. And but you know, I, I always believe you should celebrate all along the journey because you never know if you're gonna you know, you never know what can happen to you. You can get you can get sideways sometimes, you get sued for no apparent reason, all kinds of stuff can happen. But the point is that if you're if you're on the right path and you're making successes, celebrate those. Get your team, celebrate it with your clients. That was a great that was a great campaign. That was a good idea. Let's do that again. And, and that's just all on the positive side. One thing you'll hear about my books is that, you know, they're they're always they always ring true to to what's inside of us, and they're always positive. And um, and the the and the fact is we all have it. And the very front page of my first book, I started with uh, a simple, simple thought. The only thing that separates the you today from the new and powerful you that's meant to be is the step that your heart is begging you to take. You already know it. Go do it. You'll be surprised and you'll be successful. Thanks. Of it. All right. Well, we got some questions from our audience. Raj okay. Ra. So, Gary, can you expand on Got Change for a 10? 10 steps organizations need to do to successfully manage transition for their brand and organization? Yeah, that's that's great, Raj. So I don't know where you found that somewhere on the internet. Um, but I just I just gave that presentation a couple of weeks ago to my class. Uh, I can't remember the 10 steps. That's why I wrote them down. But Basically, uh, each one of the steps, and help me out, Raj. You have them. Can you share those with me, or put them in the chat? I'll, I'll take it right through each t- each of them because it's a it's a formula that I, I put together to help clients understand that whether they like it or not, transition can be a powerful tool, and and that's why I say got changed for ten because it's ten steps. So I think well. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't really talk to Mark him. Mark going to put him in here. He, he's still on here. We'll put him in here. Okay. okay, good. While he's doing that, Gary asks, have you read, uh, Gary, this is, this is not Gary, Gary, you're Gary. This is Gary, one of our audience. <laughs> Has Gary read the book called Brain, Brands Formation? It's a great book. I, I have not. Uh, who wrote it? Who wrote it, Greg? He'll put it in here, or you can also yeah. go on audio, Greg, if you want. You know, Chuck Med Freud Ford Medford. Oh, okay, Chuck Medford. Okay, uh, let me. I'm gonna t- I'll take a look at it. I'm always looking for for new stuff. One of the guys that I, I really liked in the space that's that I guess I would consider a competitor, although he's far more advanced in terms of his visibility in the marketplace is a guy named Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. He has about six gazillion people at his TED talk that he wrote about start with why. Uh, and, and, you know, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. I think that was a, an awesome premise and, uh, and, he, and he used it wisely and was very successful. So catch that, catch that TED talk if you can. It's a, it's a good 15 minutes. It's not really long, but it's very powerful. And uh, I've been working on a TED talk forever since I saw his. And uh, of course it's not there because I get distracted sometimes too, but, but uh, it's, it's in the books. You'll see some of that same thinking start with why is in each of the books that, that I put. Okay, here's the 10 I've steps. Got- yeah, do you uh, do you want to pull it up or you want me to share a screen? Uh, let's see. Um, I'm looking for where you put it. Okay, I'm going to actually find it myself off of my own files. And maybe I can share it with everybody. Is that okay? Oh, there it is. Derek's okay, here it is. Derek's oh, thank you. It. Thank you. Okay. Um, situation analysis. Yeah, the the first thing when you when you get a new client is okay. Say, why why are we here? Something had to happen. You know, the, the competitors got tough. They they got some more budget dollars. They got a new product. You know, whatever that is. 
And I and I reason it seems like an obvious thing to ask, but what is it that why did you call me? Why do you need me? Is is really helpful because sometimes you get answers that, you know, can kind of take you a certain path and, and, and they really help. The second thing is the target groups. Who are you who was who do we need to address? This is really a fluctuating kind of arena. The, the audience segmentation that we're experiencing in today's like massive networked economy is so insane that there are there are websites and 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 social media forums for people that believe whatever they want to believe. People that think chipmunks should be king. I mean, there's probably 10 people that belong to that site. I mean, that's how that's how targeted they can get. So it's important to take a look at who we're dealing with. Um, okay, this is not my 10 as I'm looking at it. So I, I don't know. Okay, so I have to go back. I should find my own, honestly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, but it's not the 10 that I that I would like to use. Okay, so bear with me for a second. I'm gonna go. Yeah, go ahead. And and oh. Joe, uh, come on camera real quick if you got a minute while he's doing that. Um, have you identified your core value, one or two of your core values, and your why, and and your mission? Like, have, have you? I, I have a feeling you have. That's why I'm calling. You. Yeah, in this case, it's really uh, identifying with because uh, I'm working the uh, the niche with nonprofits is identifying those those nonprofits in my community that are that are creating positive change uh, and so forth. And the area in the area of education, since that's that's where my background knowledge is, and healthcare. So that is that is the niche that I am uh, uh, going after. And why? Your why? You want to help them, but be elaborate. Yeah. Well, in this case, why? Because that's uh, I aligned myself with them as well, uh, meaning that uh, that it's my it's it's part of my passion to you know to give back to my community. So in this case, if I can make that that organization uh, give more through what I do, it doesn't seem like I'm working. Would you say that it's now that you've identified the benefits that they will get from what it is that you do, that it's now your duty to make sure they know and have an yes. opportunity to do it? Yeah. Yes, because normally that's one of the things that they want to do. They provide these great services in, the, in our communities, and people don't know about them. So it is now that's where I I'm, I'm that that uh, uh, that person that's going to help them. Uh, you know, reach the audience and uh, and also be able to uh, connect with them more consistently because that was that was another request that they at least as I'm finding out that it's not only connecting but staying connected. Uh, in the past, that has been very difficult, especially with parents. And and what we're finding out now is through uh, the pandemic, uh, you know the internet not being able to you know not having great bandwidth and having that that connection with uh with with the schools now more than ever you know through these uh non-profit organizations have filled in this gap to provide those services tutoring um on you know the online you know uh online tutoring uh resources of getting equipment to them so it's like so now as i'm working with them now they're like how can we get this information to more people? And so that's where I fit in. And it just falls in with my with my personal values and passion. And so I want this to be a good learning moment for everybody else that's on here, because if you haven't taken a moment to identify your why, to identify some core values, to identify who it is that you serve and why you serve them, that situation analysis, right? And then, then I highly recommend you do this. And this, this is kind of where I'm getting at. And I wanted to use you, Joe, so thank you for being a great sport and for meeting right in that I knew you'd have something for me on that. And, it, and this is what it is. It's that when you, you know, when you truly believe in what it is that you do, when what you know, I'll borrow from Omar Perry, what you have is gold, what you have they need, you are their total solution. To hold it back from that audience that you serve 
is malpractice, right? It's doing them a disservice. You actually have an obligation now that you know who it is that you can serve and why it drives you passionately. So rather than TV time, it's who's the next nonprofit I can help. So I guess my point is, if you take the time to identify some core values, who you want to serve, your why, and you really get clear on it, you're going to find so much more success. And, and it, the bottom line is because you're going to talk to more people about it. You're going to be more energized about it. You're going to naturally have more energy about what you do. And we've all heard that when you come from a place of service and you're truly going out there giving back, the universe rewards you, God rewards you, however you want to look at it. It's, it's about understanding some core values that go along and aligned, like Joe said, with the products and services that you take to the market. Take the niche you can serve, get out there and serve them, but, but have that understanding, be clear on why, because then it'll drive you. It'll be your guiding light. You can just shut your eyes and you'll find yourself to clients and you'll find yourself motivated to wanting to sign new clients every single week because the more clients you serve, the more clients you sign, the more people you're helping. Truly with where Joe is going, that's what he's doing. It's in the education side. You know, take a look at your business. Who is it that you serve and where is it that you're helping them? Maybe you're helping them to survive because most businesses of their kind have folded up because of the pandemic condition. Maybe that is your true why. Um, Nikki Dealey, who is now back into uh, our community, had been uh, gone for the last couple of years, had gone through life transitions, and, and, and she has a big, uh, she sold her agency for over, uh, 50 million plus from my memory serves me correctly, they're her agency. She's come back to go mobile and she, you know, she saw everybody's talking about wanting to get on the cannabis thing. And she's like, no, nope, that, that seems like a great opportunity, but it doesn't speak to me here. What speaks to me here are all those restaurants closing down around me. And I want to put all my resources and energy into saving all these restaurants in, in Texas, you know? And so again, it's, if, if you can make your motivation drive you like that, you'd just be surprised at how much easier this gets. Get aligned, identify the core values, okay? Identify your why. Now your why, obviously, I, Gary, you mentioned, our whys change over the years. You know, when I'm in early 20s, my why was the 500 SL convertible. You know, my why was how shiny can the Rolex be on my, on my watch? Like, how much did I bling the parking lot was my why. First kid, second kid, woo, why changed a lot, <laughs> right? And then again, through my life, separation, new family, expanded family, why changes yet again. The business takes different changes in direction. Again, continues to change the why and who you serve. All right, Gary, back to you. I, I hope you, thank you, Joe, by the way. Thank you for that, I appreciate that. Thanks, did you find your 10? I did, can I share my screen? Yes, go ahead, Derek, let him share the screen. Okay. Can everybody see this okay? Let's see. Trying to get the uh, button. Okay. Well, let's see. Looking for the play button? Yeah, we're done. Okay, everybody see that okay? Yep. All right, remember the, the premise of our company was helping brands and organizations in transition. So it seemed pretty appropriate that a compass would be our icon. Uh, and so I'm just gonna take you through this, the, the top 10 things. Uh, so catalyst identification is what I, what I was, situation analysis, I guess you always start with like, why in the heck are we doing this? What was the catalyst to make it happen? And uh, then the situation analysis, what's the vision? Look at your marketing objectives, the positioning for the brand, the audience you're trying to reach, the resources you have to work with, how the whole company can move forward with this idea, what you want to do to implement it and how to sell it through. So the first one, describe the motivation for needing the new marketing strategy. Who is initiating the change? Is there a specific problem to resolve? 
you just get those questions answered, you know, um, by your clients and, and uh, they'll think about it and you'll get really clear on what you're supposed to try to solve. Second thing is, you know, kind of do a situation analysis. I, I use SWOT is great because it gives you a chance to kind of plot the competition as well. Take a look at research. Take a look at the brands you're dealing with. Nobody is alone in their space or very few people are ever alone in their marketing space. So you've always going to have competitors. They can be, give you insights into how your brand holds up and a SWOT analysis will really help. And then any kind of research you have, and there's tons of it out now on the internet, almost on any, any topic you want. So analyze the current vision statement. This is uh, really important because as Damien just said, sometimes our why changes and therefore our, our vision needs to be, you know, revisited. I don't maybe want to go that place anymore. So, so take a look at the situation analysis. Is it still possible? Maybe we've already realized the vision and we got to let it go and go do something else. Is it relevant? Does it indicate a logical course? Most visions do. People that have a vision that they're clear about tend to know how they think they can best get there. Uh, they may not be the best way, but they have a, they have a sense that they can get there. And so just a kind of a separation of the two things between a vision statement and a marketing objective. A vision statement is something that's really open-ended that you may never get to. Uh, it's just something that you want to aspire to. And it's basically just gives you in a certain direction. It gives you inspiration and it's timeless. It lasts forever. Like the, my idea of helping people having a positive impact is something that's part of my vision statement. But as a marketing objective, this is where you got to get your clients to buckle up and say, okay, it's got to be very specific. we got to measure the results. It has to be realistic too. You can't just say we want to be the number one brand and not Coke out of the box just because we want to do that. It's, it's like, and then it's got to have a timing compact, uh, factor. You just can't make it whenever it happens, it happens. It's got to happen within a certain time. Everybody with me so far? Oh yeah. Okay. Take a look at the competitive playing field, our relationship to the competition. This is the, the, the key position. I think positioning is probably the most important thing you can learn as a, as a marketer. And that is, where are we now and where are we moving? Now, if I could do a perceptual map and at the top I had quality and on the right I'd have price, the top right corner, if I was selling cars, would be like a Rolls Royce, right? So I positioned myself in a high quality, high price quadrant. Well, every product, every service has some kind of corresponding uh, competitive landscape where you can plot your own brand versus the competition. But like the key here is pick the criteria that instead of like quality and price, which are kind of generic, and I use them just for class, say pick it's, say it's speed and it's image. You can pick, you know, size or you can pick uh, convenience. You can pick a couple of criteria that you can own, that your client can own. That's what will make them feel best. And you'll actually be able to get a clear representation of where the competition is uh, relative to that. Okay, what's the challenge, the preconceived notions, the bias that has to be overcome? What benefit do we offer? Uh, we talked about beliefs a little bit earlier. Beliefs are so powerful. You, you know right now in society, people are saying, I just can't get to this vaccination point. I'm just, I, my head can't get around it. I don't want to do it. They've got, they've got some belief that, and a belief system is so strong. It's really the, it's the, the essence of our core and people believe what they believe. And it's often impossible to change. But you try, you, you know, you try to say, okay, they might have a notion. I gotta, I gotta present some new beliefs, some new facts. I've got to kind of give them some another way to think to help them get off whatever they are, whatever that problem is. And we, is the audience right? Are we speaking their language? Sometimes the audience really shift, uh, and you have to, you have to learn to train yourself to talk to a certain kind of group. I have a, I have a diaper company out of, out of in, in China. And I started working on their brand, you know, I'm de dealing with young adults that are having kids. And so my, my, my source of information was my son. 
he's got I got two grand boys you know like okay what is the hassle with this what do we what do you think about during the day and he, I took somebody that was successful too you know he works at Facebook he's got a good gig going uh, and it helped me it helped me come up with some of the terms and notions so and you, you can actually go deeper too and you can get a lot more information but speaking their language is really important I, you know the, the word woke kind of entered into the vocabulary a few years ago and those that use it are of a particular kind of ilk and those that don't don't and so be careful on your language because audiences do change do we have what it takes to get there this is under resources worst case scenario in branding and marketing is to have a great idea of maybe a you know but you don't have the money to get there you can't buy your way in you, you don't have the time you don't have the personnel you can't get the materials you're you're actually just stuck with a good idea that you can't take anywhere that's the hardest thing but you got to ask the question and how committed are your clients to doing it and so give them a realistic you know thing is like this is going to cost you some time it's going to cost you some effort and here's how we're going to measure it remember go back to the objective and if we want to move this needle at this particular way we're going to have to have the resources to sustain a campaign over some amount of time Ooh, that was brilliant scripting <laughs> see that that this is perfect for everybody that's on here this is agency speak i guess yes and so you have to list the brand assets you know what do we have to work with you know and, and one of the brand assets we list for n70 was damien's personality and, and if you've ever seen him speak in a, in a group where he's getting people jazzed about life, you know, you know that that's, that's something you got to tap into. You can't, you can't have a, a, a client that is so energized and focused not be the icon for success. Some clients, not. Some clients, okay, just stay in the room, let me do my thing, I'll get back to you with the results, right? But most, most of the time, you know, you'll find something in the client that they want to be involved. And so then create a positive picture regarding your company's ability to navigate the change and compete externally. And it has a, the reason you do this is it has a corresponding power to get the teams internally to work together. Uh, I've worked on a lot of mergers and acquisitions over the years, and I can say combining two companies to, to when they've got conflicting cultures or cultures that don't really align properly is one of the biggest challenges you face as a marketer. Because even though it's not your job, you're not in the HR, you have to remember that it's the people, it's a big significant piece of what makes up the brand. So if the people aren't all aligned, you're not gonna be able to get there. I've done marketing briefs, I don't know, thousands of them. There's only been two times ever that I couldn't complete the project because the, what, what I was hearing and what was what, what I was dis, what I was seeing and yet what I was hearing from the owner were not in sync. They were just lying to themselves, and I have to walk away because I can't I can't motivate the the, the internal group if the if the boss isn't getting really being honest with themselves. So you have to create a positive picture, put the best possible spin you can on it, and then it's something that is authentically worth achieving. This little, this little diagram is really, when, and then as you get to this point, okay, you're gonna be introducing a new product. You've kind of gone through all the changes, and now you wanna go, how am I gonna measure this? What are the steps to actually get the word out? There's four basic steps. One, the first one is awareness. Obviously, if nobody knows about you, nothing else can happen. So every campaign begins with at point zero in terms of awareness. It, never assume that even if you've been in business for 20 years or 50 years, that your customers know everything about you. I've worked for I've worked for ad agencies and I freelance for agencies that used to be my competitors. And, and I can tell you a true story. I worked for one that's based out of Santa Ana that had a big client was Samsung. And I've been to Seoul and I've been at Samsung headquarters and I've been all over the planet with these folks. And we walked into the office in, in, in Los Angeles one time and they were really excited to share with the owner of this agency and I happened to be with them that they had just put together a brand new TV spot. They were totally unaware that this agency could produce TV. We just never told them. We assumed that they knew, did a lot of design, did websites, did packaging, you name it, we did it. But they didn't know that we could do TV. And so what happened, the new agency walked in, got the business, 
big contract, a lot of money, did a nice campaign. Well, we hung around for a long time, but it just the point of that is you got to let people know what you can do because somebody, they're going to see something on TV and say, I want one of those. Or they're going to see a webcast or hear a podcast and say, I can do that. And you, as, you're, as their marketing arm, you have to be able to do it for them. Of course, assuming that you can do it. The second thing is once you get someone's awareness, you have to let them know what you're all about. Let them know what the image is. This image is tied to vision. You know, image is destiny. Whatever you start to be, what you want to grow up to be, you take that first step, you actually start to become it. And in my world, I believe that the universe actually pulls towards you. It, it, that, that goal comes right at you. So image and awareness are really locked in. The third stage is, it is a place called brand preference where this is where all the marketing wars take place. This is where, you know, uh, Pepsi takes on Coke, where Budweiser takes on Miller or Coors, and where they the marketing dollars are spent to try to unseat somebody's thoughts about a particular brand and get that, that share market point. Because they recognize that every point, share point improvement is gazillions of dollars. And so all the money is spent in trying to get one person from one brand to another. But then of course, the final thing is this is what you want for all your clients and for their, their customers is brand loyalty, which is they only in for, forever use you, they've got it, they're locked in. You know, I, I don't know how many times over the years, Damien and I, Damien will say, I've got an idea. And he just calls me because he knows me. He knows, you know, and he trusts me. And so sometimes I can help and sometimes I can't. But the point is, that's where you want to get with your clients. So remind everyone in the process about the goals and the results. When we do a presentation for a new campaign, we ask the client to put these things up on the wall to make sure that everybody in the organization is in the is in the game and is excited about what's going to happen. You cheer every success you have, you merchandise it all the time, and, and I tell you, there's nothing better than having an owner that gets inspired by the work that you do for them and can share it with his team. And, and I want him to walk back to the factory too and tell those folks that you're making something that's going to change the freaking world, you know? And I'm excited about that. And we're going to make this happen. And then I, I ask, that's why I do a lot of coaching. You know, over the years I've been doing a lot of coaching. And so there are the 10. And, and I'll end with a quote by Aristotle, which is awesome. We are, we are what we repeatedly do. So excellence then is not an act, but it's a habit. Well, Nothing I, thank nice you, Rob, for getting us on this 10 and expanding on this 10. This is good. And Christine asks, are all, this, are all these points important to add into a business plan? Um, I'll let you answer that and then I'll give my answer on that. You know, the, if you uh, any legitimate business plan is going to touch on all of this, some some pieces more than another. You know, I've seen business plans that are really four or five pages of really succinct understanding of what's going on, and the addendum is tons of market research that supports that premise. So it doesn't have to be convoluted or heavy, but you got to consider it. Of, of these ten, I think it's important to have your vision done. And really know about that have your positioning right because that'll help your marketing objective you know between the two so what, what are your the, thoughts Damien? and that and for your business plan if that you know that would be the question because you're not going to be writing business plans for your clients but marketing strategy plans you will and some of this will cross into marketing strategy plans as well um, and Christine, you're one of Kate Buck's uh, customer, um, students, and so you, you get that. So this stuff that Gary took us through, very helpful to including some of these pieces into your marketing strategies that you, uh, you sit down with your clients. This was really good. Thank you, Gary. Now, I Welcome. want to, uh, great, Gary, please share how would apply these 10 points into mobile apps. All right, well, let me be fair to Gary on that, because that's a total blind, like, how, how, but, okay, so Gary, um, as you know, when we started Go Mobile, it was mobile apps, and we diversified over the years, right? You know, uh, you know, Google AdWord courses, Facebook ad courses, reputation marketing courses, um, SMS, and you know, we've done a lot of experts over the years, 11 years now that we've been doing this. But we, full circle, we are all in, quadrupling down on mobile applications, as you would expect 
with the uh, pandemic condition has caused this uptick in demand and sped up adoption by however many years. Uh, feels like it's sped it up by a decade, but that's why apps are hot again, which is why I started this whole Zoominar with the song Celebrate by Cool and the Gang. Because right. we're celebrating. There's a lot of apps every single week. We're getting apps being submitted now and people are selling them and having fun. So with that, now this is Raj's question. Um, tackle it how you wish. Uh, what what do you think on this list of 10, where, where would you apply that to mobile apps? I, I, I don't even know if I want him to answer this question, Raj, because I don't know if I could answer it. Um, but go ahead, Gary, if you see anything, please. And yeah, I'll, you know, uh, it, like I think the, the short answer is that, you know, uh, it, it'll fall under the tactics, which aren't on the 10 list, but it's something that you, it's a tactical, way to achieve your marketing objective yeah, and so it, it, it ties in, it ties into the objective okay excellent now i'm going to hit you with the lightning round the best advice you've ever received now if you've done this before you can give me different answers hmm. you know i think uh for me it's just be true to yourself you can't go wrong I, I, uh, there's there's an inner voice in all of us it says you're supposed to be doing what you're doing and when it's right and it's in sync with the life you have you're a happy person and when you're not you're not so find that thing that's inside of you be that person be that king that you want to be aim high like Michelangelo said you know because if that's in your heart you will get there it's not my law this is God's law this is the way the life works and so be true to yourself is the most important thing I've ever heard. And I think I heard that from my mom. Beautiful. Okay, so where can they go so they can get, as I do, a daily dose of Zen? Where do they go to opt in so they can get your email that I get every day in my inbox? Or yeah, okay, that's, that's a good question. Just send me an email and I'll add you. I'll send you last week's, because uh, I still write a brand new story every week and uh, I'll get you on my, my, my mailing list. And uh, uh, that, it's that so simple. I'll type it in here. Send a mail, email to Gary at? Gary S, G-A-R-Y-S, at Zen, S-Z-E-N, dot U-S. And just put in the, in the message line, you know, uh, a new list or get on list. And just put Damien or, you know, go mobile or whatever you want to put so I know who you are. And then I'll next week, or actually this Sunday, a new story will be coming out. I'll make and, sure you get and, on it. And don't worry, everybody. He's not the typical marketer that you need to worry about like opting in for because you're going to get hit with promotions and things like that. That's my job. Okay, that's my job. But Gary, Gary is literally just going to give you very good inspiration in your inbox at least once a week where you get the Zen notes and Zen nibbles, Zen nuggets, whatever we want to call them. Yeah. But I enjoy them. So that's the tool that I'm going to suggest all of you guys just send him an email so you can get and follow Gary. You know, Gary's still working on some big stuff. Gary, I'm proud of you, man. You're, you're still, you're, st you're having fun. You're doing it your way. And I just continue to learn by your guidance, by, by how you continue to go at life. Thank you. Know, thank you. Personally dear, and professionally. Okay, I appreciate that, you know, and so you can find me on LinkedIn, you know, and uh, in other places too. I don't have much of a Facebook presence, but but uh, yeah, and, and if you have a question on any of this stuff, or whatever, you want a second opinion, I'm happy to chime in. All right, well, thank you so much. I truly appreciate your time. Uh, what I want is I would like everybody to give you a really proper sign off now like we did, like like we do in the Go Mobile community. So if you guys enjoyed Gary, give him a big thank you. Give him some love. Let's go. Get off the mics. Get on the audio. Thank you. Oh, Gary, thanks Woo! a lot. Gary, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Best wishes for great success always. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thank Take care. you. Thank you so much, Gary. Great information. All the best to you. Thanks, Sonia. All right. Thanks, Demi. You know I love you. Thanks, See I you. love you too, man. Have a great weekend. Okay, I will. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. Well, that was it. Another happy hour in the records. In the books, as they say. Um, I hope you enjoy these moments. These are special moments for me. Uh, not 
just because I'm serving you all. Um, that's why we do it. But as I'm able to reflect on my journey, it's truly rewarding to me too. And as I'm able to see you benefit from what I maybe have benefited over my years, and just to watch it happen week in and week out, it's, it's super, super amazing and fulfilling. Um, so thank you all. Thank you all for, you know, um, giving us this platform because without you, we don't do this. So you're here, we do this, and I get to have a lot of fun. And I hope it's fun for you. And I hope you've been learning. Um, I truly I I intend to just continue to, to break out that Rolodex and go deep in the cellar. Go deep, deep, deep in the cellar for those who I care about the most and that's you so thank you so much for your time uh if you did not catch that webinar the other day that i did i what day was that it was uh two wins i the, the week is going by fast but uh that technology is stupid sick and and it's just worth a look take a look at it it's ridiculously cool and it's not even out there yet, you're, 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 you'll be one of the first to, to set your eyes on what that is for your agency and your clients. So just take a look at it. It's a replay. You can even probably use the controls. Take a look at it and see if that's something that you like. But right now what I want to do is I want to wish you all a great weekend. Uh, it's Halloween. So a couple things that we're going to be doing here at the Zamora household here is uh, we put up just like we did last year. We're going in with the culture and truly experiencing the culture. And it's Dia de los Marcos uh, out here coming up. It actually started yesterday where traditionally the families will go to scenes of an accident where someone um, in their family maybe passed away or something happened at a certain place where there is a memorial. And that's what last night was for. Uh, tonight, uh, we have the Ofrenda, which is an altar. I don't know if you've seen. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a movie, Coco. It's a Disney movie that uh, is a really good movie. You want to watch a good movie with the grandkids and kids? Watch Coco. That was an excellent movie for this time right now. It would be really good to share that with your children and grandchildren. And so what we're doing and our other grandchildren is we're creating an altar, Ofrenda, like we did last year for my daughter who passed a couple years ago, you remember. And we will have, you know, on the altar will be food that she liked and you put water out, candles uh, that'll be lit through the night, uh, bread, pan, you know, and other things, toys, things that were uh, memorial pieces for her. Now, some people, what they'll do with their ofrendas is they'll also put multiple family members that they'll honor and recognize, that they'll share space with. Uh, during that time uh, where it's believed that you know during that time you're putting all these things out to lure them to spend some time once a year to come and spend time with you and you know your, your, your late loved ones that have passed on into the into the next life right so that's what we're doing and it's Halloween which happens to also be um, our granddaughter Akira's birthday she was born on Halloween so I went out and got a pinata because that's what we do here in Mexico. I got a unicorn pinata for a little girl, right? And I got a, and, and I got about like 13 boys coming to my three-year-old granddaughter's uh, birthday party. I don't think there's a single young girl coming. So she might get to hit it a couple times. But anyway, we're doing that and uh, we're just going to enjoy the weekend. So I want you to do the same. Enjoy, you know, Halloween to me is one of my most favorite holidays and Christmas, of course, but the reason why Halloween's always been one of my favorite holidays, I love taking the kids trick-or-treating. I love being the dad that dressed up every single year, and I can look back on those pictures of all those years. I was Prince Titan or King Titan one year while they were little princesses. I was Robin Hood when they were whatever, Pocahontas, whatever. It's uh, it's just, it's just fun. I loved it. I still love it today. Now it means so much more to me though, you know? Um, so anyway, all souls. Christine says all souls. That's right. That's, that's, uh, that's also part of the culture and what's going on there. Watch that movie Coco, uh, this weekend. Watch it this weekend. That's your homework. <laughs> watch that Coco this weekend. And if you've already seen it, watch it again. Now I'm going to watch it again. Cause it's really super cool and um 
Yeah. Anybody want to say anything? You want to un- unmute so it's just not me talking to you and then I'll, I'll let everybody go back to their weekends here. Does anybody want to say anything or comment? Maybe report a win. Do we have a win to report? Well, it's not a win, but I think uh, I'm using one of those recommendations from one of our previous meetings. Uh, as I'm coming across now that, you know, a lot of folks, we're meeting, uh, we're networking more in person uh, and uh, making a suggestion of offering a, a an app for um, silent auctions for nonprofits as a way of, of getting of getting noticed and 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 hopefully being able be able to work with new organizations whoever wins off this this uh, this prize for a uh, an app a mobile app so that has really uh, it was well received from the folks because they never thought about it. So I think that kind of also put a bug in their in their eyes. Well, wait a minute, you're gonna offer this for somebody else. And without me saying it, we don't have an app. So that has opened, you know, that door there. So, I mean, I have definitely have the credits. If you have the credits, you know, utilize them in, in that way. And, uh, and so for me, it has been a very nice transitional, uh, uh, very, you know, a conversation piece just to talk about it on the benefits so all right thank you. thank you thank you for sharing that joe that's such a great idea you're right if you have the credits put them to use and serve some folks and get some exposure and that's exactly what you're doing with that joe uh agosto the uh replay i did the webinar on thursday so it was yesterday literally yesterday i don't know why i felt like it was a couple days ago that's on time uh, is spinning. So just look in your inbox. There was an email sent to you last night. If everybody wants to see that, um, look in your inbox for last night. Okay? From me. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to let you go. We're going to keep these short and sweet. So you'll you'll come every week because you know I'm not going to keep you on here for four hours. And we'll let you go to your Friday night. And uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much. I love you all. Make it a good one. Go Mo. Thanks, Damien. You're welcome, Donald. Good to see you on, bud. Go home. Go home. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Damien and team. Thank you, Tina. Good to see all of you. So Bye. glad to see all of you that continuously show up. It's like, it's it, it just really energizes me. So I love it. All right, guys. Go have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 See you next Bye. time. Bye.